You're listening to DraftKings Network. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. Oh, look who all of a sudden isn't too busy doing some big Hollywood show to be on our little show anymore. Mike Shore, I've been asking him every day. Hey, when are you coming back on? When are you coming back on? Every day for like a, a month. Hey, I've got a big Hollywood show I do, mm-hmm. not your little show, and I'm very busy. But for some reason today, some time mm-hmm. freed up on the schedule. Oh, weird. And, Weird, isn't it? Uh, how, Mike how the Ryan, timing worked out. Mike Ryan is uh, in Cancun. He has left the country. Uh, here, I will tell you. I will reveal this for the first time. Okay, what Jeremy Taché and Mike Shore have done the last part of this regular season on my phone by texturing has ruined basketball <laughs> for me, and my love of sports has been diminished because what has happened in them dorking out on my phone in a way that has been uncomfortably unpleasant late into the night for a long time because the worst thing that you can do with Jeremy is give him the number of a celebrity he admires. Whoa. Hey, there, is, there is a little Stugatz in everybody. Uh, Mike Shore, uh, welcome to the show, and uh, go ahead. Have at it. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I don't know what you have all talked about today and what you haven't because I uh, I can't listen to the show because it doesn't get posted before I come on. So I don't want to I don't want to repeat anything. So if I repeat anything that you've already talked about, just uh, just, you know, wave your hand or something and I'll sw- change subjects. I do want to talk about the series, though, because I understand that the final scores of these games made it seem like a very lopsided series, you know, 34 point win in game five, all that sort of stuff. But the reason that a lot of Celtics fans we're nervous going in, and Charlie can probably speak to this, is because Spolstra and the Heat always do things in these series that seem to change the calculus. It doesn't matter what the rosters look like, who's hurt, who isn't hurt. They always do things that drive you crazy. That's what Game 2 was all about. And so I thought as a jumping-off point for discussion, I could make a top-five list, and then we can use some of what I say here to maybe analyze the series looking backward and, and discuss the heat. So uh, this is um, top five things the heat do. Uh, if you're ready for this, are you ready for this? I don't think Charlotte's quite well, ready for it. I was just going to say, you, you know, you said why Celtics fans are so stressed. And I, I wanted to add because we're just neurotic people from New England who are a little broken, but also, yes, the heat. totally. Yes, 100 percent. But the, and I think this is specific to the heat. Okay. So here we go. Top five things the heat do. Uh, OLI, suck. <laughs> Number five, lose. <laughs> Number four, miss out on big names in the trade market. <laughs> Number three, play dirty. <laughs> Number two, phone it in during the regular season. <laughs> and the number one thing that the Heat does, uh, blow. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I don't know that which of those you same. want to talk about. That or sounds the I, same as I don't know if you want to like jump, take any of those as a jumping I off think point sucks into and, further discussion. Sucks and blow are synonyms in this context. I just strongly disagree. Yeah, same. I think they're the same thing. What do you mean? You don't think they're the same thing? Uh, regardless, I, I have I have another top five list for you. Okay, Dan. great. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, top five things that Jeremy Teche might have meant when he said that Tyler Hero was gonna do the thing <laughs> in the playoffs. <laughs> so Shit, the actual he got tweet, me. <laughs> just to re- just to refresh everyone's memory, the actual Why? tweet was, "Tyler Hero is going to do the thing this postseason. I can feel it in my bones." And how poetic would that be? I believe in my that friend was Tyler. A, a, an actual thing he tweeted. So here we go. Top five things Jeremy might have believed Tyler Hero was going to do. <laughs> OLI, suck. <laughs> Number five, go six of 19 from the floor in an elimination game. <laughs> Number four, tank his already very low trade value. <laughs> Number three, just kind of throw the ball to no one over and over again. <laughs> Number two, Full on dress like Jamiroquai in a post game press conference. I couldn't believe that. I could not believe that. 
<laughs> I, I, my God. And, I watched that. I watched that and felt hurt in my heart for Pat Riley and everything that's been done to his legacy. And the number one thing that Jeremy might have believed Tyler Hero was going to do when he said he was going to do the thing. Play 35 minutes in an elimination game and get outscored by Sam Hauser, even though Hauser only played 20 minutes. If those are if those are the things that Jeremy believed Tyler Hero was going to do in the postseason, he would have been right. I'm fine, Mike. <laughs> I'm fine. I uh, I have known Mike now for a little while, and I will just tell you, I have never seen him this radiant. <laughs> he is he is he's glowing, and it's not. He, when, when is the last? <laughs> this is my literal hell. I, when is the last time? I know. I want to know when. I, when when is the last time sports made you feel this oh, good? He's crying. Because, no, because he's I hear the, the little boy in him. <laughs> he, is and this is as happy as I've ever seen my friend because he knows good and well that it's not just that Boston wins it's that Boston has a championship chance and also that you close the Jimmy window like and so at the end of the five years you you've been scared of this team and you can finally like shake free of your shackles mm, I have another top five list for you <laughs> Do it. <laughs> These top five most delusional Heat fan beliefs heading into the series. Here we go. OLI, <laughs> we don't suck. <laughs> Number five, Bam is ready to step up and lead this team. <laughs> Number four, Nikola Jovic's length could really cause some matchup problems for the Celtics. <laughs> Number three, Kevin Love could play a huge role for us because of how he spaces the floor. <laughs> Number two, the X factor in the series just might be Patty Mills. And the number one most delusional Heat fan belief heading into the series with the Celtics, Tyler Hero is going to do the thing. Yes. <laughs> How many more top five lists do you have? I have one more. <laughs> top five things the Heat should do this offseason. Here we go. OLI, stop sucking. Yeah. Number five, extend Kevin Love. Number four, extend Jimmy Butler. Number three, extend Tyler Hero. Number two, extend Patty Mills. And the number one thing the Heat should do this offseason, run it back. <laughs> run it back baby. Bring the whole team back, run it back. I think you guys, you're close. You're close. You're this close. You look so radiant. I don't know if this post is postcoital. I don't know. I I do, I can't imagine a scenario under under which this feels like the happiness that you were spewing probably when the Red Sox won their first World Series. Like where where do you yeah. feel? I feel like this feels a bit like a historic feeling for you, a championship feeling for you. Nothing beats that. Nothing will ever beat that. But uh, I checked the uh, I checked the game. I was working yesterday because I'm, I'm making a big Hollywood uh, program, and uh, I was uh, checking the score periodically and just enjoying myself. And at the very end of the game, with like a minute left, I checked the game cast, and I saw an update that was O'Shea Brissett makes a two foot dunk assist by Svima Hyluk, and it was the greatest series of words that I had ever seen in my life. And I immediately texted it to Charlotte. <laughs> and it was it was like I, I couldn't have I couldn't have dreamed a better sentence structure than that. O'Shea Brissett makes dunk assisted by Svi Mahailuk with one minute left. He oh god, he it was so glorious. It to me and said that's basically porn to me. Yeah, that's porn. That was like porn to me. That's to not watch, safe for work. Words. We shouldn't be saying that here. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'm, I apologize to your listeners yeah. for doing something pornographic. <laughs> do we want to do stat of the day or have you now outgrown this? Have you now, now that Hollywood is back in business, do you even have a stat of the day or was it all just uh, Celtics talk? Dan, Dan, for the last time. I always come with a stat of the day. Okay. You don't have to ask me this. I always have All a stat right. of the day. All right. Stat of the day, stat of the day, it is the stat of the day. Stat of the day, stat of the day, it is the stat of the day. Stat of the day, stat of the day, it is the stat of the day. Stat of the day, stat of the day, it is the stat of the day. <laughs>
Roy's not there today, so somebody forgot to turn on original sound, so I couldn't hear the music. Oh, sorry, Mike. Do you want me to sing it to you? Here's your here's your stat of the day, uh, courtesy of Stat Muse. Derek White has more points in this uh, playoff run than the following players: Shea Gilgis Alexander, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, James Harden, Paul George, Tyrese Halliburton, Carl Anthony Towns, and Jason Tatum. I love him so much. <laughs> I love, I love him. He is, he is my, f he and Mookie Betts are my two favorite living human beings, including my own family. I swear to God, Mike, if they, if they let him go, if they let him go the way that they let Mookie go, I'm still not over it. I'm not over it. No. Derek White is a, is a salve to that wound. He really is. He is. He's a, he's a, a pure ray of of cosmic light that has been brought into our lives to just to make us happy it's interesting how quickly both of you turned your back on marcus spart to love him uh how, how quickly for the record how quickly for the record how quickly you two I did, did not, that no 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 i did not turn my back on marcus smart when we had this discussion in los angeles with amin and charlotte i said and you can check the tape i said i love that guy that guy was great i loved him on my team i loved watching him play and Amin tried to tell me and Charlotte and you, Dan, that they shouldn't have let him and Grant Williams go because, and I quote, he had that dog in him. And at the time, I said, yeah, okay, fine, but you know who's really good at basketball is Kristaps Porzingis and also Drew Holiday, and maybe it's a good idea to just get the guys who are good at basketball on your team. And I had, I was the only one in that room that had faith in those moves, and now... Brad is the executive of the year, deservedly so. And this team just absolutely tore the eight seed heat into tiny little pieces and discarded them in a waste bin in a way that they did not last year because their roster is better. And I feel like I've been vindicated. You know, y you could say Derek White has that dog in him, Dan. You could say that. You could you say might, that, Mike. You, Couldn't you, you say that? You might be able to say that. I wish you, <laughs> you had yeah. I don't think you needed to say that. You continue to say that dog in him. You love saying that dog in him. I, um, I've i rarely had harder times in my life than seeing him smile this way. <laughs> I, I, My brother just died. Oh, this is harder. Oh, this is, this on. is harder. This has, been, this, this has been harder than that. Damn. This has been harder than that. Too soon? Too soon, and also unfair. Also, where's Mike Ryan? Get that. This is coward. Lame. Mike Ryan is in here. Total coward. At least Jeremy had the guts to to show up. Right. Thank you. Right. I can't believe your year while started. taking a victory lap while taking a victory lap on Twitter, so he can hide in the internet in, 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 as a Mexican fugitive. I can't believe Mike Schur's year began with a literal nightmare of Jimmy Butler dropping him into an apocalyptic vortex and ends with me wearing eyeliner as emo Jeremy. It's poetry. Hey, it's Mike. As you know, sports are a bit crazy right now. It kind of feels like everything is happening all at once and you have to make some decisions to prioritize if you want to support your team or go out and see some of these games. Well, I've got a recommendation for you. As someone that loves sports and loves attending live sporting events, you're always hunting the secondary market for hard-to-find tickets. I've been out there in those streets, and I know the best possible place for me and you is Game Time. It's an incredible app that is so upfront with its pricing. It's an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Game Time, tons of last-minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DAN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Don Lebatard. Amino Hassan. Stugats. The amino Hassan. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats. Amin has finally landed. I can't wait to get to all of his basketball expertise. He was boots on the ground in Boston. He is covering the hell out of the NBA playoffs. Oddball every day except Monday. Uh, if you've been watching and listening recently, I am urging you very strongly to do so because they have found their voice, they have found their chemistry. That stuff can take some time, and they are galloping now. Oddball is a roaring force. Charlotte Wilder and Amin Hassan 
Madison. But, I mean, before we get to you, uh, can you guys explain to me what you were talking about with Chris Brown? I didn't. I heard you guys talking about everything going on with uh, Quavo and Chris Brown, oh. and I didn't know what, what that story was. I thought you guys were talking with Chris Brown. I'm like, you guys had Chris Brown on the show? Yeah, Always when I'm it. not here. You Always when I'm it. not here. No, so Chris Brown and Quavo have been having basically the undercard beef between Drake and Kendrick. This is like, if that's the main event, this is kind of like the co-main <laughs> right now. But um, there was a, I don't know if we have the video of it, there was a concert that Quavo had in Connecticut that apparently, again, we don't know if this has been confirmed or not, allegedly, Chris Brown did the uh, Michael Rubin, I bought all the tickets, so there was like 30 people. This looks like a Marlins game. That's when I, when I, when I saw it on the screen, I was That's... like, oh, damn, a lot of people at the Marlins game. And then I was like, oh, wait a second. So that this is the view of a Quavo concert at the XL Center in Hartford. Right next to where the Yard Goats play, by the way, Dan. I don't know if you've been there. A beautiful little setup. <laughs> I did not uh, know all of that. I did not. It looked to me at the beginning like the Sequarium, like a real sadness uh, there in the seating arrangement. So it hasn't been confirmed, though, that this was done to Quavo? By Chris Brown. Because that'd be pretty funny as a move. I, I've never been able to verify this story, but I've heard it a lot in comedy circles that one time there was supposed to be a night at a club somewhere for Dane Cook. And Chappelle was a part of the night, but he was opening. And when Chappelle got there, somebody told uh, him that he had to keep it to 10 minutes because it was Dane Cook's night. And, he, and, and Chappelle was at the height of being Chappelle, and it's Dane Cook. And so he's like, okay, I'll respect that. And I've never been able to confirm this or not. And he did 10 minutes, but at the end he said, hey, I'll be out front if you want to take pictures or anything with me. And then we'll hang out and we'll talk about stuff, and I'll be out front with you. And so <laughs> Dane Cook came out, and there was nobody well there. Well played. Right? <laughs> How do you play? Right? I'd love to know if that was true or not. Get on that for me, would you? Now, this has not been the, f the first time this has happened. Back in our past in, in hip-hop lore, 50 did this to Ja Rule, where Ja Rule came out and it was like, guys, anybody? Hello? Sound check? It is, in fact, called the 50 Cent when you do that, when you buy up the tickets to some your rival's event and then make sure no one goes. That is 50's signature move that he did years and years ago. It's also what the, the K-pop fans did to Donald Trump. Yes. The BTS mm -hmm. fans, they bought all those tickets to the rally and then there was no one there? It really is like the, a, a, a mighty gesture of like, I'm so rich, I'll give you money just for you to be That's embarrassed. That's the thing. It's like, I got the money on the back end anyway. So it's like, did I really lose? I maybe don't even have to perform. There's four people here. But it's embarrassing. And it's well, the most embarrassing part isn't just that I performed in front of four people or did not perform in front of four people. It's the, it's the line from A Bronx Tale where after they beat up the bikers, he picks one of them up and says, look at me, look at me. I did this to you. Yeah. That's the embarrassing part. If it was a mystery, why did no one show up? I don't know, but they bought tickets. It'd be fine. But it's like, I did this to you. That's the part. I mean, isn't A Bronx Tale the movie that Joe Mazzulla told us he was watching this year? Yes. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if he watches it every day. A long-ass movie. It is a long movie. It, yeah. It's a good movie, and but it filed. is a long movie. He was like, have you seen it? And I was like, no. And that was Me either. the end of the press conference. I've listened to two clips trying to get to the bottom of whether this Chappelle thing really happened, and every one does the same thing you did of, I can't confirm this, but I heard this happened. So it's like, I've, I have multiple interviews where people are telling the story, but everyone is kind of just being like, I think this happened. Gotta get Neil Brennan on and ask him. I think he's our only source that might be able to make it happen. I think if you're Chappelle, you don't want it confirmed. You just want it like a, a rumor or a whisper in the corner. It's like, I heard Chappelle exercises power this way, and it's like... Did I make his brain explode by just blinking? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Who knows? But you'll walk, you'll walk with caution around me, right? I would like, I mean, since you are here, to cover some of the things from last night that we had not covered. James Harden now has more playoff games where he has shot under 20% than any player ever. The Clippers really needed that game against Dallas. It's a weird team time a weird construct for the Clippers on are they successful or are they not successful, the Kawhi Leonard era, because he can't get out there anymore. That's a championship-worthy team when they're healthy. But Russell Westbrook yesterday, if you're looking at everything that's happening around there, since game two he was seven fouls, six turnovers, and six baskets on 17% shooting. Uh, the, the Clippers, what do you do with Clippers Mavericks? 
So we don't want to talk about the heat. I just want to be clear on the game that I actually was at and saw and witnessed. Well, we've done a lot of that so yeah. far today. I mean, okay. and you've gotten here a little bit late. I'm so sorry. If you, no, but if you if you have, let's see. Let's. I'd prefer to do it your way. Mm-hmm. Do you guys think that Amin can tell us only things that have not been said around here without having heard the show? That he can give us analysis that is not redundant with anything that's been said so far. I think I think Amin will come in here with a story about who he talked to before the game on the court side that we will not have heard because he is the mayor of schmoozing. Okay, well, I would like all of the good information that Amin has. Like, he's flying back and forth, Metal Arc Media, he's doing reporting. Greg Cody said earlier this week, it has not been said until I've said it. That was Greg (laughs) Cody's pronouncement. He comes in on Tuesdays and we're like, we've covered all of the things that you're saying. And he's like, yes, but it has not been said until I say it. This is a new segment I'm debuting right now with Amin El Hassan called It Has Not Been Said Until I Say It. Uh, Let's see if you can do six minutes of heat analysis that has not been done, or Celtics heat analysis that has not been done around here. All right, I'm going to start strong with things that I know for a fact have not been said. While waiting... In line for a urinal, urinal, I heard fans discussing whether they'd trade for Jimmy Butler. <laughs> One of them said, I'd trade him to get rid of Brown and a bag of balls. These are Celtics fans. Celtics fans. Wrecked out head to toe in green, which oh, is boy. the only color At they the wear. urinal, where you oh. were doing the, your reporting. Yes, yes, at the urinal. Uh, also, uh, this was a uh, observation. The Celtics emptied their bench early in the fourth quarter. The Heat tried to do that, except they didn't have a bench to empty. <laughs> okay, so now it's just one-liners. <laughs> yeah, something. If, uh, something that Stando you said in good. Southie, what's happening here? Something yeah. that you reported from a urinal, and also this, this is the good stuff. This is what you can find on okay. Oddball every day of right, Monday. Let's see Dan. what else. No, let's see Ditto. what. Else. Let's see what other gems Metal Lark uh, paid for. All right, so you can either say we're going to give up all threes and not allow anything in the paint, or say we're going to protect the paint and live and die by their threes. What you cannot do is fail to do either of those things. <laughs> it's the, good analysis. The Celtics shot 16 of 40 from three yes. and shot, I want to say, 25 of 35 inside the three-point line. Wow. Uh, th- it is weird to me still to see so many easy baskets in the playoff, just layups, but you have to defend the three. You have to. Derek White is the new Al Horford. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Like, like Go there's, on. Uh, you know how Stugatz is always like, Al Horford, I'm, a, I'm afraid of Al Horford. He's always there. And it doesn't matter how old he is. I think Derek White is now that guy. You weren't here just a second ago. Mike Schur and Charlotte, round one, they've fallen in love. They are deeply in love. So I heard the tail end where Mike tells this very, very <laughs> adulterated story about me, him, and Charlotte uh, and having a conversation about the Celtics missing Marcus Smart and, and Grant Williams. And there's a couple of things. Number one, he was touting the Porzingis part. And my rebuttal wasn't that Porzingis isn't good. It's that he's not reliable. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? He's hurt. Now, as it turns out, it probably won't matter because they've got an easy side of the bracket, but it, it happened, number one. Number two, I think Derek White is the biggest part of the Celtics' success this year. Yes. Everyone keeps saying, Drew Holiday, Drew, Drew Holiday doesn't do what that dude does. Yeah. That dude locks up everybody. And then here's the thing, Dan. It went from Derek White, let him shoot, to Derek White, all right, guys, he's a pretty good shooter now. Make sure you close out to him, to Derek White. Okay, he'll put it on the floor to now Derek White. Dribble, cross, swing, step back behind. I'm like, what? who is this guy? Dude, Tatum didn't give him problems. Brown didn't give him problems. Derek White bust everybody's ass. Yep. He, he was incredible. Incredible to a level where like, I'm like, okay, hold on. At what point do we start calling him the third best player on this team? Yeah. Or dare I say even higher? He also, after the game, he, he's so humble and he's so chill all the time when he talks. And he was like, well, you know, if they're going to have a lot of guys on uh, JB and JT, I got to step up. Hold on. He should have been a finalist for hold, Defensive hold, Player of the Year. Hold on. Yes, but please don't do not do this to a mean. Dare you say it? Dare I? Dare you say it? I dare. We, we are, no, we are here. Wait a minute. Dare I you, ask you? you no, say. wait a minute. You did not say it. I'm asking you to dare to say it. You have not yet said it. I want it said. 
Are you, Amin El Hassan, flying from Boston on a plane paid for to get information near the urinals coming back to South Florida right. with the dispatch that you are ready to pronounce that Derek White is better than Jalen Brown? I'm going to say that Derek White was better than Jalen Brown in this series for sure. Dare I say it? You didn't dare say it. Say it. So you didn't. I dare shan't say dare. Jalen Bell's a really good player, guys. What are we doing here? No, just highest paid player in basketball. You just dared I say, and I'm dared you. And what'd you give me? You didn't give me Derek White. You yeah. know what you could say about Derek White? That he double dog dared them. He is a dog. I thought you were gonna go Derek. with Dare oh. and Derek. Like I thought that was so. The lane was right there. It was right there. Call me Tyler Hero. I missed it. You were you were galvanized in the moment. I was galvanized. I was so galvanized. This, this, what is happening to her, and I will tell you what's happening to her, she's like, look, I can make a coast-to-coast joke that unspools over months of that dog in him. And she just got lightheaded and just loved the idea of living living a cross-country joke yeah. about this dog in him. Her and Mike Sure giggled over that. Nobody knew what the f- they were talking about like because they're making a joke from seven months ago no it's it's that dog in him's funny either way you could say that joke is jump the shark i heard whispers and rumors like the Chappelle story about you and the term jump the shark Hmm. what'd you hear it's all not true did While you were flying in, you heard you've heard already that she didn't know what jumped. He's the got shark people was. everywhere, Dan. He's at the urinal and he's he's <laughs> reporting stuff. He's got people everywhere. Jalen Brown and a bag of balls for Jimmy Butler. Do you realize that you could have you're gun shy now? I think since that jump shot that that went viral. Oh, uh, viral viral decontextualization. Viral de- Thank you. Okay, Thank but you, but you <laughs> you're you're gun shy because at any other point in your life you would have just said Derek White is better than Jalen Brown. You would have. You would have dared. Don Lebatard. Number three, Chick fil A waffle fry. Yeah, we can get mine. Love yeah, it. Does. I mean, nah, I, I think it's an overrated fry. You guys go ketchup or Chick fil A sauce I when know. you have the Chick fil A fry? Polynesian yeah. sauce. Polynesian, Polynesian wow. that, that's my brother right there. Good call. You're my brother. Stugats. Oh my God. What a weird interaction. Wow. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats. <laughs> That's right, it's time for Thursday Thunder, and it is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear about all that DraftKings has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Thursday yeah. Thunder, cooked up by Juju. Go ahead, Tony. All right, we're going to start. We're, we're actually all the way in the association tonight. We've got Obi Toppin over 8.5 points. Mike <laughs> also still has a top shot of Obi Toppin if you want to get rich. He has that for sale. Easy flip, very quick flip for Obi Toppin. Over eight and a half points for Mr. Toppin. Uh, second leg, over 30.5 points for Joel Embiid. Big night tonight. Sixers, Knicks, 30.5 points over. Based Last, on what? Uh, based on they need just it. Just believing, based, based believing on they need it, in all mm-hmm. Embiid things. Okay. Yep. Based, on, based on they need it. If they lose tonight, season's over. So you got to have 31 points for the Thursday Thunder Parlay. Uh, last one here, over 9.5 points for Deuce McBride of the Knicks. It's a nice little back and forth, and then we got Obi Toppin, former Nick. I mean, you know. I mean, how excited are you about this game as someone who knows the history of the Knicks and someone who uh, knows what it feels like when New York is believing in something? Well, I mean, that, that's, that's the wonderful part is before Game 5, I talked about this on Oddball with Charlotte, <laughs> I like to throw bombs into my little group chat of friends and family who are all Knicks fans. And so I was like, hey, guys, LeBron to the Knicks. Who says no? Oh, wow. And the reaction was so vehemently, hell no. Disturb this chemistry? We're going to ch-. like they, they truly believe they were going to ride this roommates podcast to the sky. Oh. Right. Shout out to the Roommates Podcast. It's a good podcast. It is. it is a good podcast. They're lovable. They're they, lovable. The, the, the Knicks are lovable. How about that, right? And so there, it was absolutely not. And then game five happens, 
And what I got to give a shout out to our producer, Gabe Goodwin, who yeah. is a Knicks fan, said, there's the thing about the Knicks. It's like, yeah, we're the best. Da, da, da. But then inside grows this seed that turns into this beautiful flower of, <laughs> oh, my God, this is how we F this up one more time. And they're thinking that right now. They're walk. I'm not talking about the Knicks players. I'm talking about the Knicks fan base. It's not going to be this beautiful celebration it was for games three and four in Philadelphia. This one is, ah, uh, if we don't win this one, it's going to get real ugly. Yeah, Game 7 strikes fear into the hearts of Knicks fans nationwide. That is the worst possible thing that could happen to Knicks fans because, as Amin likes to say, then it's a one-game series. Patrick Ewing missing the finger roll against the Pacers. Uh, the Heat hitting 8 billion threes. Uh, in Game 7 while half the Knicks are suspended for fighting, right? Like all the games, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon going nuts. John, game, yeah, John Starks, John Starks going 2 for 18. Right, which is what the Heat shot, I believe, in the first quarter. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it, this, is, this is all the things that their nightmares are made of, those two words, Game 7. They've got a couple Game 7 wins, but they don't remember the Game 7 wins. They remember the Game 7 failures. I feel like what we're presently witnessing with the Knicks fan base is uh, a little bit unlike anything that I've seen before it because they've gotten bl plenty loud over nothing when it was just Carmelo winning a game in the first round, uh, when we had the, the fun of Trey Young uh, in a postseason. But they've had precious few moments. They've had not a lot of belief or time to fall in love with guys who felt like winners. And this is the loudest and most hopeful and most in love I have seen this market in a long time with a basketball team of overachievers because I don't believe that that roster's that good. And I remember, I mean, the first time I ever learned of how it is that a fan base falls in love with something that's not that good and makes itself crazy irrational. The Miami Heat of Dwayne Wade were 42-40 and 40 with Brian Grant and Lamar Odom. And I saw Miami fall in love with a team that could not win a road game because they were not good enough. And I saw them fall in love with a 42-40 and 40 team so much that people were yelling at me, you don't trade for Shaq! Don't chemistry. trade for Shaq. The Brian chemistry. Grant is important. He's part of the chemistry, the culture. And the it's the first time I saw it, and they're going to do it with this Knicks team, too, where they fall in love with the pieces right up until they run into a team that has a LeBron when they don't have a LeBron. Dan, do you want to get into the more blasphemous kind of conversations I've had in this group chat? Ooh, I do. Where does Jalen Brunson rank among greatest Knicks of all time? Wow. Is that blasphemous? When Patrick Ewing is behind Jalen Brunson, I had, oh. to, I had to talk to him off the I said, guys, Patrick Ewing, how many conference finals? How many NBA finals? How, how many years of being a 20 and 10 guy, right? Year after. And, and the response to me was, yeah, but Jalen Brunson got here when it was terrible and made it good. And I was like, so did Patrick Ewing. <laughs> he was the, the number one pick of the draft. <laughs> the problem right now for Knicks fans is that they have hope that is backed up by evidence. This is a... 50, over 50 wins this team. They won on the road. They won at home. They won in bad situations. They were down They were down over and over over the course of the season. And they came, they had a, I think the Sixers have had a double digit lead in every game this series. And the Knicks have come back. This is the most dangerous thing you can give to Knicks fans because it's say, hey, things might be bad right now, but they can get better. And then the team has made them better. I, I told them, you guys aren't just being prisoners of the moment on this one. You guys are doing a life bid at Pelican Bay Moment Correctional Facility. 23-hour lockdown. Shoot, Shoot program. program. There it is. All right, well, wait My a guy. minute, though. You are now bringing back your group texts and information from a urinal as you're, you're just reading your texts now. That's you, right. You just got here. We need the, the, the better stuff. We need the, the, the best you've got on basketball. You came here late. We've got to get it condensed. Not to stand up for my co-host, but reporting from the urinal is about as inside the building as you can get, Dan. Dude, I'm telling you, Celtics fans would entertain a Jimmy Butler deal. I thought this was going to get everybody going. They here. will. Uh, they the Knicks fan will get lightheaded and will forget. And it's okay to forget this, but I just think that the delusion that sinks in about winning a championship. That team, if Philadelphia or Miami had been healthy this season, that Knicks team is not good enough to be at the top of this conference. It happened. I, I disagree. Okay, I disagree. 
I, I, they are legitimately good. I agree. They are legitimate. They are I le- agree with that. Wait a minute. Where's the disagreement? Because I know they're legitimately good. But healthy, <laughs> healthy Philadelphia, healthy Miami uh, would have had a better regular season record, and you would have thought them favorites in a series against the Knicks. But the betting Knicks, favorites. The Knicks weren't healthy either. The Knicks didn't have Julius Randle. The Knicks didn't have Mitch Robinson. The Knicks didn't have OG and Anobi for a while. And then Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart hung in there. And now they're doing, it like, at a certain point, not being good. It's like, oh, they're not good. They're overachieving. It's like, well, what point do you believe it? Because I sort of believe it now. They, they, they are. You know what's funny is, this is the funniest part, is that you don't even see when you're looking in a mirror. Wow. They are a very Miami Heat-like team now. Mm-hmm. Execution. N- not making mistakes. Guys being stars in their roles and a guy at the center of this who at the beginning of of this experiment with this team many would have said he's not a superstar does that sound familiar do you remember a conversation about you guys acquiring a guy and i'm telling you that guy's a superstar he's not a superstar and what he does is not flashy and it's not high flying it's pretty flashy who jimmy i it no or or jalen brunson Brunson is i don't think he's Jalen Brunson to me is a flashy player. I don't. What, why is he not flashy? It's he's super like, exciting he's to watch. Like old man game flashy. Exactly. So the Still NBA flashy. fan is conditioned. This is all Michael Jordan's fault. The NBA fan is conditioned. Is what does a superstar looks like? Six six and flying through the air, right? Dazzling with moves, aerial acrobatics, and anyone who doesn't do that. So Jimmy Butler is six six, but. It's ground and pound. It's it take you to the down to the block. It's get to the free throw line. It's the stuff that Mike uh, Mike sure hates, right? It, it, it eats him up inside because it's just so methodical. Jalen Brunson, same thing. It's footwork. It's up and unders. It's it's not flashy like Allen Iverson crossovers. It's definitely not soaring through the air. And so when we see that, we say. Well, he's, he's all right, but he's not on the same level. Like, how, how many times do we hear this year people saying, well, he's a nice little player, but he's not on the level of these greats. And the way he's played, he is. It is similar, actually, to the year that this Heat core was the one seed because they had the regular season that they took seriously. They missed a huge chunk of games from Bama to Bio that year, who was obviously one of their best players, but they got to the postseason after taking the regular season very seriously, getting a high seed. They ultimately lost to the Celtics in seven that season, and you might see a similar result for the Knicks, who their superstar took a leap. They had a really great regular season, and maybe they make their run to the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't know if they'll be as competitive against the Celtics as the Heat were in that series, because Celtics look more overwhelming, but it's a similar look of regular season, taking it seriously, playing all those guys a lot of minutes. As someone married to a Knicks fan, an Eastern Conference final, Celtics-Knicks might be the best content we could possibly get. A house divided. Dun, dun, dun. Love that. Uh, Miami Heat fans will not enjoy watching that, but we'll get the benefit of one of them will have their season ended, oh, so God. you are guaranteed to be able to make fun of one of the fan bases. And then they'll lose the Jokic, right? Whoever comes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the best case Anthony scenario. Edwards. That's the best case scenario. Ooh.